Hey guys, welcome to Book Review 177. Today I am going to be reviewing One from the Road by Tony Hurwitz. I don't have the book on me, so uh, check the comments. I think that's the author's name. Anyway, uh, this book is about uh, Tony traveling around uh, the uh, kind of interior of Australia more than the rim. Um, kind of, he doesn't really visit very many of the cities outside of the very beginning. He starts in Sydney and then he goes through Perth. But most of the book takes place in the outback. Um, takes place really in areas that aren't necessarily tourist areas because, uh, hold on. Sorry. Starts in uh, areas that aren't necessarily tourist areas um, because he hitchhikes, uh, which has kind of been a theme recently in some of my book reviews. Um, but basically sticks out the thumb and sees uh, what sort of random people wash over him. Uh, be it locals, be it uh, road train drivers, be it uh, he even does some like a uh, weird sort of uh, hitching, like he hitches a train once, uh, he also hitches, uh, or I guess it's not really hitching, but spends some time on a fishing boat um, you know, he does everything from uh, kind of the old conservative uh, RV class that rant against all the greens and uh, you know, how they're destroying Australia to super hippy dippy types to uh, aborigines whose cars uh, work. Matter of fact, I think he said he got a ride like six times with uh, aboriginal groups and five of those times uh, there was some sort of mechanical problem uh, along the way, uh, you know, which is what it is. Uh, kind of talks about some of the loose change of the road. Um, a lot of, I can't remember all their names because he picks up really probably hundreds of uh, rides, um, but just how a lot of them are small towns, so, uh, kind of theme throughout the book too. Uh, apparently there are no drunk driving laws in Australia because uh, the amount of beer that people consume while driving is pretty uh, grotesque in this book. Um, now that being said, uh, it is in sort of rural uh, country settings, it's, you know, it's pretty easy driving, but at the same time it's kind of... Uh, a bit, a bit disconcerting. Um, so kind of what is the route that he travels? He starts in Sydney and then goes sort of like to the uh, north, uh, central north west of New South Wales, up through uh, Queensland, like where uh, Burke and Willis were, where Leinhardt was, um, and then uh, makes his way up to uh, Mount Isa, um, talks about sort of the weird desolation that there is there or how the town pretty much like goes straight into a mining pit um visits a number of pubs uh in that section uh <laughs> that's another theme throughout the book is uh the australian pub um then makes his way up to three ways in the northern territories uh and rather than go straight to darwin he goes south he goes to um uluru goes to the olgas um that's kind of one of the big sightseeing things that he says. And he says it's a 10 out of 10 on his scale uh, for things to see. Um, meets a couple that does mining in, uh, well, they don't do it in Cooper Pebby because Cooper Pebby is mostly uh, mined out. Matter of fact, it's largely sort of this Delaract kind of tour weird tourist destination where um, people try to sell, sell you opals instead of still mining for them. Uh, there's a town that starts with an M that's further north that's become the new um, mining capital. Uh, let's see, what else is there? He goes south, does not see Adelaide, goes through uh, the Wheat Belt Territory near, I think it's called like Lincoln, uh, into Seyuna and Streaky Bay, kind of that area, uh, then crosses the Nullanbar. He was initially planning to do like the off-road from the Olgos to the uh, Western Australia, but seeing that there was no rides, and how long and desolate it was. It's exa not exactly ideal for a hitchhiker unless you can get one ride uh, the whole way. Um, and he couldn't find one. So he goes down to the, the south, past Cooper Pebby, down into the Nolan Bar. Um, takes the Nolan Bar. Uh, this is the part of the story where there's the cranky old uh, lady that takes him, uh, all the uh, family. Well, it's a cranky, it's a family with a cranky, like 45, 50 year old woman that. Uh, was from Tasmania and constantly rails against, uh, you know, uh, say things like saving trees in Tasmania, and that's why she wants to move to Western Australia. 
uh, because there's a greater uh, uh, mine ability there. Um, rides around with a uh, doctor in uh, uh, kind of es the Esperance area. Um, kind of, he said it was his dream uh, hitchhiking thing, a uh, woman. Now, he is married, but he's just saying, you know, as companionship. Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, a woman, attractive, driving a uh, sports car. I think she was driving a uh, top-down BMW or something like that. And she was a doctor. So, you know, most of the time, uh, the uh, he mentions in the book, the people that give you rides are the people that are on the lower strata. And he says they actually tend to be more generous with the meager means that they have, whereas people sort of on the expensive end tend to be a little tight ass. Um, which is why I get so many rides in with like Aborigines and road train drivers and you know kind of just the workaday people of the uh, the world. Um, that's also the area where he takes the train, uh, goes into Perth, uh, spends a little time in Fremantle, gives a little bit of history of the city, talks about it how it's a little bohemian, uh, but really ultimately wants to get out of Perth area. This is not a book about urban Australia; it's a book more about rural Australia. Uh, kind of the spaces in between, not even necessarily all the sites, but kind of the long expanse uh, between the two. Um, and so he goes uh, north from Perth, goes, uh, this is some of the most desolate country, also goes through like the Simpson Desert, like uh, there's just huge areas with, uh, like around Mount Isa that are just, there's nothing in between. I, I don't think I can emphasize that enough. Um, but eventually he goes up to Carnarvon, um, where he has, oh no, he goes to Geraldton first, and then Geraldton to Carnarvon. I forget what he does in Geraldton. Uh, Carnarvon, uh, fishing boat, kind of meets some weird people. Uh, goes up to Port Headland in all its uh, industrial glory, or uh, lack thereof. Uh, <laughs> he says that uh, Port Headland, I think it was saying Port Headland. Uh, Port Headland has the subtlety and romance of a gangbang. So <laughs> that's a pretty... Uh, stark description of uh, Port Headland. Um, go, finally goes up to uh, Broome, has a, uh, sees I think 80 mile beach, uh, uh, and kind of talks about, uh, this. there's a slow driver that goes along with him. Um, you know, there's a lot of sort of like, I don't want to call them Texas types, but just kind of like, you know, loose change that kind of go through the outback, so. Um, but it gets up to Broome. Broome's kind of a hippy dippy city uh, that also has kind of an industrial past, but uh, still kind of clings to that with uh, specifically pearling. Pearling is the big industry in Broome. Um, meets some pearlers, uh, meets some of the coffee hippie types, uh, and then actually goes to Seder in uh, Broome. Um, from there, he drives uh, east back up to Darwin. Now I will say I lost this book. I lost the last 20 pages, so uh, sorry, Tony. Uh, I won't be able to uh, get it for you. Okay, um, I feel like I'm a little sure. What, what else should I include? Uh, yeah, it was just a really interesting book going around the uh, interior parts of Australia. Very easy read. Um, not that it doesn't have a uh, you know a deeper meaning but it's just it's uh, it's a page turner um, it's very funny uh, I'd say that uh, his sense of humor at kind of the antics of the people of the outback is uh, pretty stellar uh, just his kind of wry observations of these uh, eccentric characters like for example he says the when he's in rural Western Australia um, he talks about these people that were complaining about how uh, Perth is too uh, fast-paced, too fast-paced, too fast-paced. Now, that may have happened like more recently. This book was written in like I think the late '80s, early '90s. Uh, but when he went into uh, Perth, he said, "If Perth is your definition of fast, you must have like some of the slowest metabolism on the planet, or something along those lines." Uh, just because Perth even though it's a city and there is a little bit of hustle, it's about as low-key a city as you can possibly get on Earth. So, you know, it's largely built around money from the mining boom. So, um, let's see. Yeah, overall, a good review. Check it, or a good book. Hopefully a good review, I don't know. Um, One for the Road by 
I believe, Tony Hurwitz. All right, check it out, you guys. Bye.